All right, so a lot went on in Trey Lance's first start, and I want to talk about it. Let's not waste any time. The highs, the lows, and the inevitable growing pains that we're going to see when you start a 21-year-old. So uh, on the first play, Debo Samuel, he's going to get wide open, and he would potentially have a big play. Unfortunately, as you can see, there's an unblocked defender. Trey Lance makes one, two guys miss, and then outruns the angle for a first down. So right there, you can see the ceiling. But when we get to this pass protection part of the play, and as you saw, so let's pause it here. Alex Mack just identified this guy as the mic. What happens when they do that? That means he has to he has to account for the blitzing linebacker right here. Lakin Tomlinson is going to take the defense tackle. Trent Williams is going to take the defensive end. So these three are on these two, three right here. So he's going to go to this side. That leaves Mike McGlinchey against J.J. Watt and Daniel Brunskill against the defensive tackle right here. Because he is going out in a route, that means it's going to be five on five. And I'll let it run here a little bit. So there you go. He's going to be unblocked. And that means Trey Lance has to get rid of it hot. He has to get rid of the ball right away. Should they change the pass, the pass protection rules right now? 100%. According to a former offensive lineman who played for the 49ers, they, the center cannot change the pass protection rules. The only way they would be able to do that is if either guard were uncovered. And this guy played under Kyle Shanahan, so he knows the pass protection rules. So that is on the quarterback. What does the quarterback have to do? He has to give them what's called a flipper call. That means he has to flip the pass protection. So that means Alex Mack would go here. Daniel Brunskill would go here. And Mike McGlinchey would fan out to Chandler Jones. So it's just a fan call, flipper call. Um, that does not happen. And that is a rookie mistake. Thankfully, he has the athleticism to make one, two, and outrun an angle. But in the grand scheme of things, first play, um, Trey Lance was throwing a curveball and he swung and missed. All right, so this is the interception. So the good on this play is you'll see that Trey Lance, and this was a theme throughout the game, he's taking the doubles over the singles. So a lot of times if you would imagine Jimmy Garoppolo would check it down here and not hit this receiver. He's open. There's no doubt about it. Trey Lance sells the pass, as you can see, and that is a problem. He's been throwing high pretty much since training camp, and it's shown up over the first couple of games. But I think the real issue is that Trey Lance, he doesn't have to step up in the pocket here. Like, the, the pocket's clean. He just needs to set his feet. Let's watch it. Just he moved. Like, that pocket movement is good. Right now, he just needs to reset. He does a climb, climb, reset right there. Set, Get his feet set, get his feet in the ground, make a nice, easy throw over the coverage, and hit Travis Benjamin. He tries to throw it on the run. And that's why it ends up like that. So, again, uh, just once he slows down, doesn't need to always use his athleticism. Just get his feet set and throw the ball. So this is the defensive pass interference to Travis Benjamin, who is apparently the 49ers new wide receiver one. But that's for a whole other discussion. So what I want to pay attention on this throw is just Trey Lance playing with good timing. Watch his feet work. One, two, three. Back foot hits. Throws the ball on time. Defensive pass interference. My only takeaway from this play is that he's playing on time, and that's how you win in the NFL. When you have proper footwork, um, his it looks like his shoulders and his feet are aligned to where he's throwing the ball. Gets pass interference. All right, ESPN had a stat that said Trey Lance had the most batted passes of any 49ers quarterback over the past 10 years with four. As you can see, he's going to miss Debo Samuel on that over route right there. Play would have been there, would have been wide open. What Lance is going to have to learn is that even when he knows, first off, this is just ridiculous that they let this play go on, clear, incomplete pass. But what Lance is going to have to learn in the NFL, just use your eyes. You know you want to throw to Debo the whole time. If he knows the ball is going to be over here, just look the defense off. That way, these guys up front, when they're not getting a pass for us, they're taught to get their hands up. Easy completion if he does that. So I know everybody's killing Kyle Shannon right now, but he does a really good job of coming back to plays that either work or if they didn't work, he'll come back to them knowing that they were open. So here it is. Uh, we just talked about it. Debo Sam is going to run an over route and Trey Lance is going to hit him. And again, as the first play, even on that interception, it's doubles, not singles. And that's how you sustain offense. So he's open right here. He could easily check down the ball to the running back and probably gain what five, 10 yards. Instead, 
he goes over the top to Debo Samuel. That is the right play. That's what's been missing in this offense, and that's why I feel good about what Lance brings to the table. Lance is throwing 100, 101, 102 mile an hour fastballs. He is bringing it, and I don't think the wide receivers are comfortable with that. I would imagine he has to take some off, but here you can see Debo Samuel doesn't catch the ball with his palms facing the quarterback. He looks, like I said, he's bracing it, so it, it seems as though he wants to protect himself, and that's a drop. How many times have we seen Debo Samuel take a pass like this? That defender, if he has his hands going the correct what the correct direction, that's a big play. But I mean, I don't know how much you want to put on Lance for firing it in there, but he's an NFL receiver, Debo Samuel, and he's was leading the league in receiving yards heading into this game. So uh, that should be a catch. That should be a big play. Incomplete drop. Third down, money down. Have to convert here. Everybody knows you're passing. Cardinals are in man coverage across the board. Lance, when you get man coverage, you just take your best matchup. And he does a great job of that. Goes to Ayuk here. The guy who needs to take the next step, even though he makes a great catch here, gets open, creates separation, um, <laughs> catches, a goal, catches the ball with somebody all over him. But again, we can save that. We can do 50 minutes on Brand Ayuk, Ayuk being open. Let's talk about Trey Lance here. Part of the issues when he is sailing passes that are high is because he's overstriding. You see that is not an issue here. Great ball placement. And just watch his footwork. Plays on time. One, two, three. Ball is out in a perfect location where only Ayuk can make that grab. Um, just a really good play all around for the 49ers. So we'll get his chance to see it from the end zone view here. Just to check out his footwork. One, two, three. Perfect. Done. All right, so the 49ers are going to run four verts here. So Debo Sam is going to run off. Ross Doyle is going to run down the seam. And Charlie Warren is going to bend it in and run a seam. And then Ayuk is going to run here. Kyle Ushek is going to come in motion. And it's going to turn into four strong. He's going to be in the flat to try to hold the defender. Lance needs to understand in the NFL, this is open. Let's just run the play and we'll talk about it. So... Right as he clears the linebacker right here, and he, that's where he was looking. He was he was looking at um, the number two wide receiver, or technically tight end. But this is open in the NFL, and he has to take those. And I believe he does later in the game. But that is a throw that you want Lance to make. Understand in the NFL, we're going to make those throws. We're going to take those throws, especially especially on third and ten in this scenario. So let's watch it from the end zone view. That way you can get an idea of where his helmet is looking who he is looking at. Lance makes the correct read. Just He almost goes through his progressions too quickly there. And they have to punt. All right, on the ensuing third down, actually third and 11, the 49ers run a similar concept. So again, Shanahan does a really nice job of going back to the well, knowing that it works. And what does Trey Lance do? He does exactly what he's supposed to do. So um, Brandon Ayuk is going to run up and he's going to bend it in, run kind of a bender post. And then Muhammad Sanu in the slot is going to run right behind him. Lance does a good job, perfect job. Waits until Sanu clears a linebacker. And this is just a good sign of growth here and just being coachable. So last time, remember I said, as soon as he clears his second level defender, Lance needs to let it rip. He does it this time, hits Sanu right where he needs to, third and 11, drop. That was brutal just because... I mean, I said during the game, those are the types of throws that keep your offense on track. And that actually, you know, builds confidence and gets you guys going that tells Shannon, hey, maybe I should call more passing plays over the middle. Maybe I should do more down the field. Um, didn't really see that much. But again, good, really good footwork right there. Good accuracy. Everything's on time. Just brutal dropping. Sanu has probably the best hands on the team. And one thing I want to talk about is just the, the theme. You see singles. Nope. You want to take the double. You want to take the first down. He could easily check it down here to Kyle Juszczyk, but Lance does a good job of foregoing that, taking the wide receiver that's past the first down marker, and that's what this offense has been missing. All right, so we have third and nine right here, and we've seen it just in two games, in really one and a half games, where Lance, if he gets blitzed, his eyes will drop, he will miss his check down. This is a great sign of growth because the Cardinals, they're going to run Man coverage, and they're going to bring five, these interior and this safety, I believe. And then 
the linebacker is going to come off and he's going to be the middle hole dropper. And this guy is going to take Ross Dwelly. So, Kajuszczyk leaks out. Trey Lance finds him. Very simple play, but this has not been happening. So, we're seeing growth as he's playing. That matters for a quarterback. It's almost like he has to play to learn these things and get better. Uh, again, very simple. Gets the ball out. Juice does what Juice usually does and makes the guy miss. So we'll be able to see it from the end zone view. Again, just to see how the Cardinals lined up and how Lance doesn't really panic. He knows, gets a good pre-snap read, knows where his check down is going to be. That's Juice. Sees the guy coming. Sees the linebacker. Let's rewind it real quick. I imagine as soon as he knows this Chandler Jones drops to the middle of the field in the hole, middle hole, nobody has nobody's there to account for Juice Check. All right, so the 49ers struggled on fourth down. All game. They struggled on third down too. So this one was one of the, the only fourth down that they did convert. How does that happen? It starts with Debo Samuel at the top. He has to have a must outside release is what they call it. So MOR. By doing that, so the Cardinals are in cover two. He's the flat defender. It means he's responsible for essentially all short routes. And this safety has the deep half. So that's the cover two part. Debo Samuel is going to go outside and he's going to run up. Mohamed Sanu is going to run up and he's going to run out. Uh, simple concept, and the Cardinals are going to blitz five. They're, I believe they're going to send these interior rushers. One of these, I think it's the linebacker who hugs the back, so it seems like they're running, they're blitzing six. Uh, the safety is going to blitz off the edge, and he's going to come free and hit Lance. However, big, strong quarterback doesn't affect the throw. Lance does a good job, again, of just playing with timing. You'll see it run here. Gets the ball out, knows it has to come out because there is blitz. One, two, three, back foot hits. Ball is exactly where it needs to be. As you can see, watch Debo Samuel at the top of the screen here. Must outside release. Takes the corner out of the way. That way he can't make a play on that out route. So really nice job by Debo. Uh, good execution by Trey Lance. Ball is exactly where it needs to be. Great timing. Good footwork. One, two, three. Ball is out. Is not affected by the safety. And you get a nice little fist pump from the head coach. Let's watch that. He, Kyle Shannon is very emotional. So watch him right here. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. Yes. First down. And honestly, there really aren't any pass protection issues here from the 49ers up front. This is just what good NFL defenses do by hugging the line of scrimmage. It messes with all of their pass protection rules just because they're all covered. And Kyle Yushek takes the inside threat. Um, but as soon as he drops off, that means Alex Mack doesn't have anybody to block. And that's why uh, this edge rusher coming off the right side of the screen is unblocked. But again, Trey Lance plays with good timing, and that allows this play to be successful. One, two, three, off. First down. All right, and this is a play that Trey Lance wants to have back. So this is a sack, and this is on the quarterback. So what he is looking at is Brennan going to come up here, and he's going to settle down. He's going to have two of his underneath routes, both the running back or well, Two running backs, Kyle Juszczyk, since he is essentially turned into a receiver. He's going to run a return route, be open underneath, and then Mitchell's going to come over, and he's going to be open right around here. So let's watch the play. Lance, if he doesn't like what he sees from Mayuk, no problem. Not there. Just come down to one of these two. Look at all this space, all of this room that they have, and it's second and long. So you have to live to fight another down. Give your playmakers a shot to make a play. He does not do that. And that's why there's a sack. Just start it over and let it run through here. And he could go either way, whether it's Juice running that slant, whether it's Mitchell running the return round. Actually, that's my, my mistake. Still, Lance, go through your progressions. Don't have to, when the first read isn't there, your first instinct shouldn't be to drop your eyes and run. He's gotten much better at that, but this was a play where... He did not. Just has to be consistent. Again, he's 21. All right, here's another miss of a check down. And I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but he should get the ball to Brandon Ayuk here. So third and 22, the score is 10 to nothing. A field goal would do wonders right here. Instead, it's a deep pass, and they're not in field goal range to cut it down. And they have to punt because you're not going to go for it on fourth and 22. So let's walk through the play here. Lance gets immediate pressure, and right there, he has to bail. Again, his athleticism allows him to do this. So Juice is going to run off. And when he does that, I feel like, and this feels like Monday morning quarterback, but 
the ball should probably go to Ayuk there. And it looks a lot more open when we go to the end zone view. So good job to avoid the pressure right away. Now the next step, the next, you know, him evolving as a player would be to take what's there. Give what the take what the defense gives you. Especially in this scenario where he needs to understand they need they a field goal works right here. He's open. Throw him the ball. You have a corner bailing with your fullback and a safety over top. Um I understand, you know, giving him a chance in this scenario, but the ball's out of bounds. Uh, just got to cut it down. And we saw the kick fly. He has a boot. He kicked the field goal. It looked like it would have been good from uh, 50, the one that he did hit. So maybe this is it. Ayuk is probably there. And they get to kick a field goal instead. Punt. One thing that is consistent with Lance is he's going to give his guy a shot. So it's second in San Francisco, second in forever. What we're going to see is the swirl route. By now, if you've been watching, you know he's going to come up. He's going to act like he's running to the corner. And Ayuk is going to stop. Lance goes through his progressions. He doesn't like what he sees over here. Goes from this read to the middle of the field to Ayuk. And as soon as he lets it rip, it's one of those pew lasers. Hits Ayuk in the only spot that he can make a play. Ayuk does a really nice job of boxing out the cornerback here. But um, just watch this exactly where it needs to be and then. Ayuk takes over after that, makes a couple guys miss, and converts second and 25 on one play. Let's watch it from the end zone view so you can get an idea of where Lance's helmet goes. That way you can see his progression. What's he looking at? What's he thinking? Takes a drop. Back foot hits. You see one, two, and gets to his third progression. So doesn't like it. There's a second progression. It's covered. Doesn't like it. Gets to his third and watch, as soon as he gets to his third, the ball is out. This is an amazing play. This is what you want. This is why you take him number three before he even throws the ball, just going through his progression. This is the type of quarterback Trey Lance can be. This is the type of quarterback you expect him to be. It's going to take some time to get there. He has to play to get there. So uh, really good play, again, in a place where only Brandon Ayuk can get it, and then Ayuk does Ayuk things. This is the last one, and I just want to show Lance going through his progressions, and it seems like he misses Ayuk over the middle, right down the middle on an over out on a bender, whatever you want to call it. So let's walk through the play here. It seems like he goes from the, this route concept, curl flat, and he goes all the way to the top of the screen and foregoes what we see right here, Brandon Ayuk. So you'll, you'll be able to get a better look of it from the end zone just to see where his eyes, where his helmet are looking. Uh, it takes a hit. Don't want him to take those hits when there are receivers open for him. Again, just about being consistent, but the receiver who needs to take his game to the next step or next take next step, uh, he's open. And he was open for a lot of this game. So not really going to blame Mayuk. And even when Lance is, you know, scrambling right now, this is a throw that he can make. I know it seems like a long throw, but he has an arm. He has plenty of arm strength to make this throw. And there is enough space on the sideline, and he could even loft it over this defender. He's six yards away. He's not going to contest this pass right here. Um, is that being nitpicky? I don't think so. I think all of this, all of these throws that I'm talking about are, are things that Lance can do. So don't want to take the unnecessary hit. Just give the ball to your best player. We'll see you from the end zone view here. Third and 14, especially in the situation that the 49ers are in. Drop back pass, need to play, pull the trigger. And that was something that actually was, I don't know if you want to call it, you know, um, a fault of his, but Trey Lance did not pull the trigger much in these scenarios where it was iffy whether it was going to be open or not. But I thought he could have made something happen here. But overall, I thought he was good. I thought that the 49ers did more than enough to win. Kyle Shanahan said as much, and he didn't get a lot of help. He made his mistakes. There's no doubt about it, but he has to play to improve. And that is not going to happen if he's on the bench, of course. Um, we saw that, you know, he has a knee sprain. He might be out one to two weeks. We'll see. Who knows when the next time it is that we do see Lance on the field. But, I mean, for a first start against a team that's 5-0, and against a team, you know, that is playing very well, I thought it was encouraging to see Lance, and I hope we see more of him soon.